So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to share with everyone that, that cymbals are oftentimes, of all the accessory percussion instruments, they are the instrument that is the most offensive <laughs> when, when, um, when played by a, you know, a student or in maybe in community bands or orchestras because we don't practice it and frankly we don't oftentimes know what to practice. So the the impetus today, the goal of the clinic, and, and I put it here, is for help help you understand what to buy. Um, you know, what what do I get? You know, you open the Zildjian catalog, you open the website and there's literally hundreds of symbols so you don't know what to get. Um, and then understanding how to play them, just a basic understanding on, on how to play them and how to get a good sound, and then what to practice. So what do, what do I practice? What do I, what do I do to become better at this instrument? And guys, this is not something you have to spend, uh, you know, hours and hours on. It's something that you can do for, you know, well, the saying goes like this, if you're in a band or a community band, or if you're a student, uh, five minutes a day keeps the conductor away. So, you know, you have that thing where symbols, you know, and you're back there and you, you know, you slam them together and either you get a bad sound or you turn them inside out, which is really pretty awful. So that's the goal of the clinic, that you understand those three concepts and that you are excited about playing this instrument as opposed to being horrified. So let me share just a few things with you. Um, I'm going to demonstrate m most of the playing techniques with a pair of 18 inch. Uh, 18 inch is the standard. This is K Constantinople. And these here are classic orchestral. Um, why do we have classic orchestral? Why do we have K Constantinople? Why, why do you have more than one pair of 18 inch? So let's hear them. Well, I'll start with the classic orchestral. So let's just listen to this and I'll step back. Hopefully the sound will come through. Uh, we did a sound check and I think it's, I think we're in pretty good shape. So these are 18 inch classic orchestrals. Let's listen to them. I'll play some soft. So that is the symbol I recommend for high school and college, 18-inch classic orchestral medium light. You can do probably 90% of the playing with these guys. Now, why do we have a second pair? Why do we have K Constantinople when you already have classic orchestral? I'll tell you why. Well, in fact, you tell me why. Here is 18-inch K Constantinople. softly. Back to the classic orchestral. I hope you can hear this. And K Constantinople. Same size, by the way. What's the difference? Anybody want to, if you want to jot in the chat, I'll give you a second. But what is the difference in sound between the classic orchestral and the K Constantinople? They look, they definitely look different. These have, if you can see the hammer marks, ton of hammer marks. These, this is more, what it looks like more lathing and very brightish, where this is kind of darkish, hint, hint. Anybody, anybody chat, Lauren? No chats, no. Oh, okay. Come on, everybody. We can do it. I'm here. I'm here. You're here. Yeah. Tell me, All Philip. Right. Uh, I think, uh, can you um, tell me to can you, um, introduce the symbols again? Con K Constantinople, classic orchestral. K Constantinople is, in, is here. I'm shaking it. Classic orchestral is here. What was the difference in sound that you heard? Okay, so 
I think the K custom crash symbol was a bit louder than the other symbols that you was demonstrating. Oh, that's correct? Yeah, definitely more projection, and I'll tell you why in a second. Yep. Anything else? Do you hear anything in the pitch difference? I'll demonstrate again. They sound the same pitch. Now, I'm not sure how it's coming over Zoom. Uh, it sounds it sound different. The, other, the K custom kind of has a low pitch while the other symbol has a, a bit high pitch. Bravo! Brilliant. <laughs> yes, exactly. You were right on. These are a bit, what, instead of saying louder, I would say project more, okay? But it's the same same right. concept. Right. Um, the classic orchestrals uh, are a little bit, I, the word I would use in, not in a derogatory way, they're just more wispy, a little more delicate. The K Constantinople, K Constantinople are a bit more earthy, a little bit more, got a little more weight to them. Um, the hammering makes them darker, which is exactly what you said. One's higher, one's lower. The classic orchestrals are, are in general higher pitched, a little, like I said, wispy and more uh, brighter. If you notice, the K constant, uh, the classic orchestrals are, um, they are, were designed by the uh, percussionist in the Boston Symphony, Frank Epstein. The K Constantinopoles were designed in conjunction with the Cincinnati Symphony and Tom Freer and the Cleveland Orchestra. They are a darker sound. They, they are sort of right in the middle of the ensemble, classical orchestral right on the top. So you are exactly right. So nice job. And thank you for sort of jumping in and, and, and uh, answering the question. So we have two of Mike the Mike also commented for you here, Keith, oh. that the, the K, K was about a fourth lower, was his comment. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah, exactly. The, the, yeah, it's a fourth lower, lower in pitch. Um, I could go into the reasons. I'll, I'll tell you that there's more hammering with the K Constantinople, and I mentioned that before. You can see it there. Classic orchestral has less hammering. In general, um, you know, the Boston Symphony has a beautiful hall and, and the sound sort of rides on the top of the ensemble, a bit more French, if you will. The K Constantinople, darker, a bit more German, if you will. I, it's a very generalization, but, but you are exactly correct. Uh, nice job, guys, thank you. Um, so we have two, two sounds, which one is better? Um, typically, you say, well, if you pay more money, you get a better sound. It's going to be better. In, with cymbals, it's actually, that's not the case. Uh, the classic orchestral, in the cast cymbals, these are, by the way, these are all cast cymbal. They're made from a disc. Um, these are not sheet cymbals, which is like, um, which are spun different. That's a whole different line. So these are all cast. Just want to make that clear. So the classic orchestral take less work to make. Are they better or worse than the K Constantinople? The answer is no. The classic orchestral and the K Constantinople are equally quality instruments. The difference is you and what you like. Maybe you like the sound of the classic orchestral. You will like that sound resonates with you. Pardon the pun. Um, but maybe the darker sound is something you want. You want more projection. The band you play with plays really loud. Or you, you know, there's, you have a hundred piece orchestra or a hundred piece band. You need that very strong projection, okay? So I want to be clear that in, with symbols in the cast family, really paying more money does not give you anything better. What it gives you is a different sound, and that sound is determined by you and your voice and what resonates with you. So let's talk about some playing techniques. And I want you guys to, to 
do this if you don't mind it might feel a little strange in your living room or wherever you are to do this Lauren's gonna do it <laughs> all right and so I want you to grab like you're grabbing a key to turn in a door and you're gonna wrap your fingers around and if you if you can see what I'm doing here Lauren you are like you are a magic you are nailing it all right so you're just grabbing between your index finger and thumb and you're wrapping your fingers around like you're turning the key in a door. So that move, that is very similar to how you hold a snare drum stick. And if you notice the straps, kind of if I hold them out like this, are like a snare drum stick. So I can grab the cymbal with my index finger and thumb, just like a snare drum, or just like I'm turning a key in a door, if you see it there. And if you notice, I'm using leather straps. These are made by Zildjian. These are awesome. Um, if you notice, I'm not using any pads. Pads mute the sound. Typically, we use pads for marching. And I don't think you can see it, but right in here, I don't have a grommet. Some cymbals, marching cymbals, have grommets. And with concert cymbals, you really want to make sure you don't have a grommet, that you have a leather cymbal strap, right, no pad, and no grommet, okay? So again, like a key in a door, all right? So when I grab that, now I have two plates of metal. And you guys, you think like, this is what my, my students do some of the time. They're like, I pick up this, and they're like, yeah, I got some serious metal here. I got Zildjian's, I'm gonna like, and they get very tense when they crash because you might look at the music and the music says, forte, fortissimo, solo. Those words create tension. And it's kind of like golfing <laughs> where the harder you hit the ball, the worse it is. You got to swing through. So relaxation is key. So when you see those words forte, fortissimo, solo, and you think I'm going to smash these symbols, not good, guys. I'm going to, no, 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 I'm going to relax. And you're going to remember me saying, calm, you can play louder and hit the golf ball farther if you think less about smash and more about crash i just made that up okay <laughs> all right so what i do is i i have the um i actually put the heavier symbol in my left hand this is my left hand i know we're on zoom so sometimes it reverses it but this is my left hand and my right hand is going to crash onto my left hand. All right. And if you notice the angle of the symbols, is one edge going to strike first? Which edge is going to strike first? Top edge is going to strike first, if you can see it. This, where all edges strike together, you get this sound. Now I'm going to move from all edges striking together to a flam. Check it out. I'll do it again. Note, if, if it's, hopefully it's coming through Zoom, this, when all edges strike together, it sounds like this. When I let the top edge strike first, a flam, one edge strikes, the other, the rest of the symbol strikes, it becomes, well, here is what it sounds like. Okay, so here, right over that, that sounds amazing. The change, and hopefully you hear that pop, 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 cha, 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 and it opens up. If you notice, I'm primarily moving my right hand onto my left. Heavier symbol in my left hand, in my right hand, the lighter symbol. And a good way to remember that is to think of striking a drum. So I have a stick here, 
and I'm going to strike the stick onto the drum. All right, we're pretending that the table's a drum. The drum doesn't move. The stick is lighter than the drum. So I'm thinking of the left hand coming on to the cymbal. My left hand is stationary. My right hand is the stick. Stick, drum. Stick, drum, stick, drum. Here we go. Again, I'll demonstrate as I move to a flam. All right, so next. Preparation, crash, and release. We tend to, I call it the Bugs Bunny crash. I look back at my students and I see them gearing up for a cymbal crash and they look like this. I'm gonna smash these things. Not good. Here, you're probably gonna miss, okay? And when you come together, this is where you can potentially turn the cymbals inside out, which is very bad. Okay, and that comes from tension. Um, if you don't know what that means, I'm glad. <laughs> but what happens is you hit them so hard together that they actually flip inside out. So they look like that. It's not good. Preparation is here, nice and close. You don't need to come out to here. Okay, right here. If you notice, my top edge is set to strike first. Okay. I'm not moving my left hand. Now when I bring the cymbals together, I release them. I'm not gripping them. Demonstration. That, if I keep doing that, that will in fact turn the cymbals inside out. Okay, now watch what I do if I release them. Right hand on the left, flam, relax, breathe. Demonstration again. And if you notice, my thumbs are coming off. I'm letting the cymbals vibrate against one another. I'll do this a few times. I'll do it a little closer, reaching over the table. I'll do it a little bit farther back. If you total, when the symbols come together, it's total relaxation. So a good way to practice this is to take your fingers like we had between your thumb and your index. And let, we can do this all together in your living rooms. This motion. What's wrong with this? Too far. Nice and close. When the symbols come together, this is the preparation, here's the crash, here. And if you notice, my hands are super uh, loose. I'm gripping, but the minute I bring them together, I loosen up and I grip the symbols in the back. Demonstration again. And if you notice, my arms come out absolute relaxation. Left hand stationary, right hand on to left, just like you would play a drum. Demonstration again. All right, so uh, hold your dominant, yep, 45 degree angle. Bring the symbols apart. Okay, when I was in high school, if you remember the three parts that I mentioned, preparation, crash, and release. So when I was in high school, my band director said, hold the cymbals up, which I did. And he thought that was the greatest thing. He loved that. Um, it's a little extreme to hold the cymbals above your head like this and you're waving them around. Um, so the release really can simply be this. Preparation, crash, release. Holding them up like this is a little extreme. Demonstration of, of multiple ways to hold them up.
demonstration. And if you want maximum resonance, actually this is the best way to do that. So you can practice this without, with or without symbols. Demonstration, preparation, crash, jaw, release. Preparation, crash, release. And when you combine those faster, you get this, you get demonstration of a nice symbol crash. If you notice, I'm thinking flam, I'm thinking breathe, I'm thinking preparation, crash, release. Tensing up and holding your breath, not good. Preparation, breathe, crash, release. Okay, so any questions about the playing techniques? You can practice this here this. Are we good? All right. Uh, I got a question. Philip, please ask me a question. Uh, what was the, the green angle? How are you supposed to uh, crash the symbol again? Yeah, 45 degree angle. So I'm here, left hand. So there, if you could see it on the video, left hand there. Mm-hmm. Now I'm bringing the right hand onto the left. This is a drum, this is a stick, pretending in my mind. All right, top edge strikes first. Preparation, crash, release. So to answer your question, it's a 45 degree angle. Okay, got it. All right. So I guess, you know, the other symbol's a little different angle because it's flaming, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm just thinking about a 45 degree angle right there. Any other questions? And Philip, you know, you mentioned, you know, what angle and, you know, you can just hold your hand like this. Like I said, gripping here, you can just hold your hand like that and sort of practice that. Preparation. Crash, release. Preparation, crash, release. Cool. Mike, Mike just has a comment. He says, oh, love it. Lauren, I can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, can you hear me now? No. Looking in the chat. Oh, I see some. Are there some questions here? What about a fourth level? Yep, love it. Wish I had heard this years ago. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> well, you're hearing it now. Better late than ever. There you go. All right. Hang on, guys. Um, there we go. Okay. You guys can hear me okay, right? You bet. All right. We're good. All right. So let's listen to some sounds, some of these Zildjian sounds. I don't understand if we have 18 inch, why do we need two? Well, we discovered, um, and Mike even said, it was about a fourth lower, you know, lower in pitch. So here's another 18 inch symbol. These are called the K symphonics. These are much heavier. Again, if you notice, I mark left hand if you see right here i put my name and i put left hand because i want this in my left hand right hand left hand all right tell me the difference in sound between these Guys, this is a squirrel. 
This is a raccoon. Oh yeah. This is a black bear with teeth. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but this is obliterating. Like <laughs> the entire room's going, whoa. These are called the K Symphonics, and they have what's called cluster around because I really want to show you this. I was in the room when we cut kind of this. It's you get some more apparent on the back. If you can see those that cluster right there of hammering and it happens several times here's another one right there and what it is is a cluster in four spots on the symbol and what it does is it's it it um it opens up the sound that's what we discovered that it wasn't as tight uh, this symbol is incredibly dark, incredibly powerful. I'm still using the same technique, preparation, crash, and release, but these are the K-Symphonics. Again, why do we have more than one kind of 18-inch symbol? Because we care about you as a player, as a person, as a, as a musician, as an artist. You know, I mean, I mean, you are looking for a sound that quote unquote resonates with you or makes sense to you is this any of these wrong no no you're wrong it should be that no 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 i use i don't know it's it's the same as you know i'm wearing a black shirt and somebody is wearing a purple shirt well you know no it's just what you like okay um let me demonstrate let me see i went right to the big ones there <laughs> okay Symbols were originally designed to be played outside. They were uh, part of the uh, Turkish Janissary bands. And the Turkish Janissary bands, they had drums, they had wind instruments. Uh, oftentimes they had jingle sticks or triangles and they were played outside. So symbols were primarily designed as an outdoor instrument, part of the military, okay? So, when a, when you see something for example um in a march john phillips who's a march bander says i want to hear the symbols in the trio and you're going oh my gosh it is so hard to play soft <laughs> soft playing can be achieved several ways but it can be achieved by using smaller symbols these are 16 inch k constantinople medium lights so there's less weight it's not as hard to play and guys i'm doing the exact same thing preparation crash release demonstration and you can hear it, I, or I hope you can hear it. There's a little flam in there to kink. Now, the, are the 16 inch cymbals going to be able to play the incredible volume and projection of the K symphonics? No, I'll play them. As I get louder, you'll notice they sound a bit more contained. Compared to the K Symphonic 18 inch. K Symphonic 18 inch. No comparison. However, can I play as intimate and sort of uh, like uh, contained softly? First of all, it's very difficult because they're heavier. So in situations where you're able to, you can use smaller symbols. Why do I have so many symbols? Well, 16 inch I use primarily for soft playing. 
I use my 18 inch for general playing. I use my K-Symphonic for sort of explosive loud playing. Another trick that I'll share with you when you play soft, well, let me demonstrate. So those, uh, those were the K Constantinople um, 16 inch. Here are the classic orchestral 16 inch. This, well, you tell me. This is an ant. This is a black bear with teeth. This is a squirrel. And this is a raccoon. There's nothing wrong with being an ant. There's nothing wrong with being a black bear with big teeth going, roar. There's nothing wrong with it. It just depends on what you want. Here's what I want right now. I want very dainty and very light sounding. Oh, hello, ant. Conductor stops. Right, the symbol's not good. I want a darker sound. Don't worry, maestro. I got them right here. This is why you guys have to buy a ton of symbols because you need all these sound. Conductor says I want a darker sound. Got it right here. Ready? Are you are you ready? There is my I guess up from an ant, not a squirrel. I need something in between. Need a little help. Uh, ant. Let me see. A a mongoose? No, that's too aggressive. No, 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 not good. An ant, maybe up from. I'm I'm blanking. Need a little help, but it's okay. You something up from an ant? <laughs> About a, a mouse. Grasshopper. <laughs> grasshopper. <laughs> Conductor says, I want this to sound just very light and beautiful. Okay, got my squirrel. I'm all set to go. Damn. All right. So, whew, um, I'm thinking I'm seeing some something come through in the chat. So I'm going to jump in here. Different orchestral excerpts require different sounds of cymbals, just like snare drums and different tambourines and different mallets and sticks. This is absolutely correct. Um, you are exactly correct. And it's not just excerpts, it's anything. In fact, anytime you play any instrument and you are thinking about the music, it's not just picking up a pair of sticks and hitting the drum or picking up the cymbals or the mallet for the bass drum or the xylophone or the glockenspiel. You have to think about what sound you want. And that's why if you see over here, I have a lot of cymbals because I there's a lot of music out there. <laughs> there's a lot of music. I want I, I want an ant. I want, you know, I want a squirrel. I want a black bear with teeth. All right. So um, let me see. I demonstrated the classic orchestral uh, medium light. That was this, uh, the K Constantinople special selection. These 18 inch is what I recommend for general playing. Moving on, I demonstrated the classic orchestral medium light, which were these. Um, and these were the ant, as I remember. Um, coming over here, and I said smaller sounds, the K Constantinople medium light, which are these. I think this was, I think I was unknown what that was. Um, then there's the K Constantinople medium heavy vintage, and then the K symphonic was the black, black bear. So let me demonstrate um, the sounds as, as symbols get thinner, they get lower in pitch and oftentimes i had that reversed i actually didn't know that so i'm going to demonstrate two pairs of 16 inch symbols all right hold oh, please you guys don't have to answer pop quiz which symbol goes in the left hand the heavier or the lighter is a drum heavier than a stick that's all i'll say 
So here is a lighter 16 inch. These are my, these are my 16 inch K, uh, K Constantinople. Same size, this symbol now is heavier. This symbol is lighter. So I'm not sure if that's coming through coming through Zoom, but the, the idea is that lighter is lower. Heavier is higher. L L H H. It's very simple to remember. Because oftentimes people say, well, how do you know which one to put in the left? How do you know which one's heavier? I put them on a scale, <laughs> to be honest with you. I hold I hold one symbol, I weigh myself and the symbol, grab the next one, I put myself on a scale, and I go, oh, okay, that one's a little heavier. Um, if you're confused by it, you know, I put the higher one. Higher is heavier in my left hand, the lighter, lower one in my right hand. Turn the page. So what do you practice? Oh man, I got so much stuff to practice, practicing drum set and my band director said the cymbals sound, don't sound good. What do I practice? I have the simplest exercise, which is right there on the next page. It says what to practice. Mr. Leo, this looks so easy. It's a bunch of whole notes. That's, what do I, how do I want to practice that? That makes no sense to me. That's what I would have said when I was in high school. I would have said, that's the dumbest thing I ever saw. Give me something hard. So what I want you to practice is, and I'm going to demonstrate it and potentially embarrass myself right now. All you have to practice is 10 notes, 10 notes, 10 notes. And each one has to be the same volume, the same sound quality, the same flam. They have to sound exactly the same. Okay? All you got to do, and I am not picking pianissimo. No, I'm not doing that now in risk of embarrassing myself. I'm going to pick mezzo piano, mezzo piano. And I'm not even going to do 10. Now, I hope hopefully this comes through Zoom. Lauren and I did a sound check and we were trying to get it. But I'm going to play five notes and I'm going to pick mezzo piano. No, I'm going to pick mezzo forte. I'm going to be a little bit louder because I'm. And you tell me, are these five notes exactly the same? Not kind of the I mean, I'm talking use your ears put push the headphones into your into your ears or something here we go egg exactly the same all right five notes How'd I do? Lauren, you have any comments there? <laughs> the ears well, of percussion source. I'll let everybody else come at first here. Anybody? <laughs> Philip, what'd you hear? Uh, I think it kind of sounds, I think it kind of sounds the same. I oh. Listen carefully. I, I, I'll be honest. Number three was not good. <laughs> and number five, I thought about too much. I was like, because I hit number four and number five was, so it might be a Zoom thing, but I'll tell you, try to sit in a room and play five crashes exactly the same. Super hard to do, yeah. Try it on triangle. Triangle is like unbelievably difficult. Um, 
Yeah, so Philip, I don't think that was coming through on Zoom for 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 you because three was not good. Well, five was actually terrible, <laughs> to be honest with you. To be real, see, I told you I was going to embarrass myself. All right, that's one thing you can do. What do you practice? That's what you do. Then I wrote a couple etudes that you can play that you could practice. And I'm going to play these etudes with some of the different symbols that I have to show you the different ways you can interpret a piece like this. Because most of the time you see that and you simply pick up any stick or mallet and just whack through it. All right. But here we go. Um, should I do number one? Yeah, I'll do the first one. This is on what to practice. This is the first symbol etude. Okay. Here we go. Right, I want it darker and stronger. I got my black bear, got my black bear. Right, it's too strong. Right, it's wrong. It's not good. I'm imitating a, a English conductor I worked with for years. Right, Keith, it's wrong. Oh, nice, thank you. Okay, now, same thing. Right, I want it to be smaller and more contained and just, just more gentle. Okay, so right there I just demonstrated three different sounds, three different interpretations of the exact same piece. Completely different experience for the listener, completely different, simply because I changed what size and what weight symbol I used. And thus the reason that, again, that I have so many symbols and that you should part of your mission as an educator as a as a percussionist as a student is to expand your collection of gear because sound is your trademark sound is your trademark okay um there's an advanced etude there that you can have a look at um but briefly um you know, i could play that i'll play it i'll play it with the squirrel this is fast Okay, here we go. This is the uh, symbol etude advanced. Okay. Um, the thing with muffling is, uh, and this is why I put this in there, is that we tend to hold symbols high and we push into our chest, which really hurts. And if you eat a lot of pasta like I do, if you're lower, you have plenty of cushion down here. And so muffling is achieved simply by <coughs> bringing the symbols into your stomach. <coughs> and I have plenty of that. Okay, if you notice I'm not holding the symbols out here and making these big motions, it's all very contained. All right. Awesome. Leather straps, grommets, plain techniques, different sounds. And I want to finish up with one thing suspended symbol briefly. I think we're okay with time, right, Lauren? We're good? Okay. Yep, we're good. So, um, guys. 
Um, in a lot of the music, it says to use a timpani mallet. Sometimes it says actually sponge headed stick, um, but it will say timpani mallet on suspended cymbal. Now, this is a gr awesome Tim Jenis mallet and taking it and striking it onto a metallic surface in my view is not good, not good, not good. And it damages the timpani mallet as well as the metal goes directly to the core and crushes down the felt. So Zildjian and Vic Firth have made awesome Beckon mallets with Vic Firth and cymbal mallets with Zildjian. And these things are great. They're designed for cymbals so you don't damage your expensive timpani mallet because felt just is gonna, it just breaks apart. So this is cymbal mallet. And frankly, I'm not sure it's coming through, but it sounds better. I have a gooseneck cymbal stand. And I think you can see that. I'm gonna take this off. So if you see it, it's actually, they call it a gooseneck because it looks like a gooseneck. But if you notice, this has um, flexibility, sort of elasticity. So I take a cymbal with a strap and I put it on there. And if you notice, that's a lot of free vi vibration compared to your typical pole stand with, with a felt, which is touching the cymbal. Here, you just have a tiny bit of the leather, or leather on the bottom. And so uh, this, the Zildjian stand goes into um, any kind of symbol base of a symbol stand that you want. And they produce, if you have different kinds of stands, I'm trying to hold this here. If you notice, it slides into many different size stands. And if you're like me, I always have extra stands that I lost parts to, so I just mount that there. All right. And then the other thing is where you put your symbols. If you notice here, I have two trap tables. I lay them flat. I have my music here, conductor there, symbols are here. If I need a little bit more room or if I don't want to lay them flat, Zildjian produces this awesome symbol cradle. And you can put the symbols directly into the cradle. If you notice, there is um, plastic over the metal, so there's no sound. So I'll demonstrate. You're, you don't have metal on metal. And this attaches to uh, any kind of symbol stand. So I just have a symbol stand, I attach it there. And if you can see it, it, it takes up very little room on stage. It's actually great. Typically, I have typically I have one pair in this. And it's awesome because you can raise it up and no sound. Or, you know, like I said, you can lay you can lay your symbols on a trap table. Um, and if you want to get fancy, you can actually put the gooseneck into the top of this symbol stand and you have a whole kind of thing. It's online on the Zildjian website. They have it shown that way. Um, and then if you notice, I'm using a black towel so that my mallets don't hit the stand. And suspended symbol, I got my cradle, got my my two trap tables, black towel. And uh, one more thing on suspended symbol before we call it. Um, this is a brush, awesome brush. Sometimes music says to use a brush on suspended symbol. And um, sometimes this sound is not very loud. And so I use the Vic Firth dreadlocks, which Maybe if I hold it here, 
but these these are great it gets a great light brush sound but it's just a little bit more volume and what's really cool you can do some really great effects with it you can lay this the brush on there i don't know you guys getting that can you hear it i'll do it yeah again. yeah it's coming through okay so if you have to roll like snare drum sticks roll on the suspended cymbal i simply do this very cool yeah wood stick okay but i real i use these all the time i have two of them um so i have one here one there typically um hand symbols here i usually have my um my cradle on this side and um you are a artist if you do that so hopefully we achieve the goals <laughs> you guys i would appreciate it philip asking some questions um but you know gather information about gear I mean, I usually I do a pop quiz now, but we'll just I'll just give you the answers. 18 inch is standard. Um, 16 inch is great for uh, younger younger kids. 16 inch is also great for softer playing. Um, if you want to get real uh, like a darker sound, you go to K Symphonics or the K Constantinople. Um, to understand a basic understanding of playing techniques, preparation crash release all right 45 degree angle philip you asked about that right on to left h h left hand heavier symbol right hand lighter symbol um what do i practice try starting out with five notes <laughs> and as you saw philip said they sounded pretty close but if over zoom not you know that would they were not unfortunately three and five were not good i have to, i have to practice uh remember five minutes a day keeps the conductor away um practice the beginning exercises and i offered you a, a beginning exercise and an advanced exercise um and the thing is the most important part of the clinic is to have a passion and a love and an enthusiasm for playing these instruments they are historic they can be beautiful they unfortunately can be really they can ruin moments in concerts if they're not played correctly um and at the end at the very end i gave you some resources i called it sources that's i gave you the straps the cradle the cradle the suspended symbol arm um there's a bunch of books there there's solos and etudes which are very interesting um i in fact wrote a book i took away the name um accessories and i replaced it with complimentary complimentary percussion it complements the rest of the section and it gives it a greater importance than an accessory an accessory if it's such an accessory how come it can ruin concerts when played in, in, incorrectly. So there you go. Awesome. Thank you so much, Keith. Um, if everybody can do me a favor, can you go ahead and if you have access to a camera, go ahead and turn it on here for a minute. Uh, I'm going to read Mike's uh, uh, comment while we're doing that. Uh, he says, I teach third, fourth and fifth graders. So size weight is of prime importance at that point. That is going to help me give good techniques to develop them. So thank you, Keith. Um, I don't know about everybody else. I certainly learned something in the symbol clinic. Uh, I, I think I'm going to remember the answer and, and black bears for uh, <laughs> quite quite some time <laughs> so yep. yeah the squirrel the, the squirrel, squirrel. Okay. gotta have the squirrel yep the squirrels are sad so um before we wrap up are there any last minute questions or anything from anybody or, or comments for keith great job keith did yes. a great job. Yay. Thank you so much, yeah, Keith. Everybody job, give Keith. Keith a round of applause. Yay. Yay. Virtual, virtual. Yeah. Thank you so much.
You bet. So thank you so much, Keith. Uh, thank you uh, also to, to Zildjian for sponsoring uh, this masterclass. On uh, Monday, I will go ahead and send out an email to all of you uh, with the, the recording link. So if you need to go refresh yourself at some point, uh, you'll have access to that, uh, as well as a couple other links to some of the symbols and stuff that, that Keith was talking about. So, so thanks again for coming. Uh, this was really a nice way to start a Saturday morning. Yeah, guys, thank you for letting me share with you guys. Appreciate it. And thank you to Percussion Source, of course. You bet. All right. Have fun, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks.